I have a short repair video for you guys today, but we'll get to that in a moment. I wanted to start the video off with the giveaway announcement. So I ran a survey on the channel, which 1500 of you participated in asking whether I should give away tools or a retro console to celebrate the 25K subscriber milestone. And I was actually pretty surprised at the results. They were dead on 50-50 uh, for the first couple of days of the survey. Right now, I think they're 49, 51% in favor of the retro console, but I decided to go ahead and do both. I thought it was pretty funny how evenly the results were split, but the more I thought about it, the more it actually made sense. I recognize that there's an audience out there that love getting their hands dirty, fixing stuff, and would appreciate some tools to add to their toolkit. I also recognize that there are people out there that consume content like this a little bit more passively and would appreciate some retro games to enjoy instead. So we're gonna do both. Now, this week we're doing the tools giveaway. Next month, we're doing a Game Gear giveaway. So we're not doing the Game Gear giveaway this week. I'll talk about that in a minute. But for the tools, and this is not sponsored by the way, I bought all these with my own money. We have a TS100 soldering iron and we have two sets of a toolkit and a pocket multimeter. The reason that I picked these specific items is because these are the exact items that I use myself and I can stand behind them. Uh, the TS100, very cool soldering iron. You guys have seen it in all my videos. I've used it to repair almost every console that you see on the shelf here behind me. In terms of these two bundles right here, we have a pocket multimeter. This is the exact same pocket multimeter that you guys see in all my videos. Uh, it's just a small auto range multimeter, very nice little product. And this is the Moray bit set from iFixit. I believe this is a relatively new product. It's a little bit smaller than the bit set that I have, but it's geared towards small electronics, cell phones, and uh, video game consoles. So it has the game bit drivers that you need for like all the Nintendo consoles and cartridges and all the common bit sets that you would need for opening up your video game consoles. So first prize will be the TS100 soldering iron and second and third prize will be the iFixit bit set and the pocket multimeter. You guys have a whole week to enter the giveaway. So seven days from the moment that this video is posted, one entry per person, I will ship worldwide. Leave a comment below with the word hashtag repair anywhere in your comment to enter the giveaway. In seven days, I will leave a pinned comment on this video to let you guys know that the giveaway is closed. And in my next upload, I will randomly select and announce the three winners of the tools giveaway. I wish you guys the best of luck with the tools giveaway. It's just my small way of saying thank you to you guys for engaging with my content. And I hope that you or someone in your life can enjoy and benefit from some of these repair tools. So moving on. Let's chat about these Game Gears. So next month, there will be another giveaway. All three of these non-working Sega Game Gears were very generously donated to the channel by James. Thank you, James. All three of these systems have some sort of issue either with video or with reading the card. They all power on though. And I think there's a very good chance that we can get two out of three working. And maybe there's a smaller chance that we can get all three working. In any case, I will fully repair and restore one of these Sega Game Gears for next month's giveaway. And that's gonna include a full recap and a new housing. And the winner can either enjoy it as is, or you have a fully restored Game Gear that you can then mod to your heart's content. There are so many aftermarket mods for the Sega Game Gear, screen upgrades, soundboard upgrades, and you can go crazy. You can participate in both the tools giveaway this week and the Game Gear giveaway whenever it's ready sometime next month. I'll keep you guys posted. I'm still waiting on capacitor kits to arrive for these systems and I don't have any games to test them out. So I bought a bunch on eBay and those will be arriving any day now as well. All right, let's clear the workbench and I'm sure you guys are dying to hear about my drill. So I've owned this drill for about six years and it was one of the first tools that I actually bought when I started becoming more interested in repair and learning how to fix stuff around the house. And it's a Black & Decker, the brand sticker has peeled off and it has a very odd design choice. It is a micro USB lithium drill. And one of the biggest complaints in the reviews about this drill is that the port becomes loose and the drill stops charging. And as careful as I am with my stuff, three, four years into owning this drill, that exact same issue happened with this drill the port became loose and it stopped charging. So I attempted a repair. And when you're an absolute beginner in soldering, 
swapping out a micro USB port is not a good first project. And this was one of the first soldering projects that I did long before I started this channel. I'm actually shocked that I actually got it working. And it's gonna be pretty funny to open this thing up and see what my work looked like two, three years ago. And it's actually pretty amazing that I got this thing working at all. It's been working fine for the last couple of years and it just now again crapped out. So when you plug this guy in, it doesn't charge. You wiggle the cable, you might get it to charge. So we're gonna open this thing up, take a look at what my soldering looked like a couple of years ago. And I have an idea of modifying this and just using a barrel jack. When you're in the garage, you're wearing gloves, you're shoving something in and out. It's not the most appropriate connector for a tool like this. So if I can modify it and put a barrel jack here, I might just do that instead. All right, guys, let's open this thing up and take a look inside. All right, there we go. It's just a sticker holding it together. Let's peel that off. Let's get the battery out. These are just two 18650 cells. Wow. Look at that beautiful soldering job. The funny thing is, I think none of these pins are actually touching the board and it, that probably doesn't matter because those are data lines. And this is probably the connection that broke. All right, let's disconnect the battery. All right, let's get the iron nice and hot. Uh, I think 350 is fine. Uh, let's do 380. Let's do one side at a time. That took absolutely no effort. All right, let's try and clean the pads up. Get some flux on there. And just grab this guy like this. And let's clean that up. That's not looking too hot. Now, this wouldn't have normally looked like this. I think I must have applied so much heat. And I think when I did this, I had one of those inexpensive $10 soldering irons that constantly run at 450 Celsius. So some of the solder mask is completely missing. Let's go ahead and clean up the underside. And you guys can see the burn marks on the back from excessive heat. All right, guys, I have found an old cable modem. Look at this beauty. It's got a nice little barrel jack. I think it's a mini barrel jack. I don't know what they call these. It's smaller than the standard size ones. So, I have a device with a perfectly good barrel jack with its power cord. The adapter is the wrong voltage. The drill runs off five volt USB and this is 12 volts. So we're gonna have to modify the power supply as well to use this cable. Let's see about breaking this thing open and seeing how we can salvage that port. I got a pair of gloves as well, so I don't hurt myself. There we go. All right. Things are happening. We've exposed two screws. Wonderful. All right. Come on. More screws. Beautiful. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and extract this port. A little bit of flux.
cutting small pieces of braid like this and using some tweezers or some forceps, you guys can see how little material I need to use to do the job. So it's a great way to stretch your solder wick and make it last a long time. Just use small pieces, but grab it with a pair of tweezers or forceps so that you can handle the heat. All right, are we close? Woo! She's out. Nice. Now the question is, how do we fit this guy here? So I'm considering my options for installing this port and once the board's seated in, if I wanna use the same charging area, I kind of have to drill further up into the case to make this thing fit. And I can probably get it in there, but I think what I'm gonna try and do instead is chop off or saw off this protruding part of the board. So I think I might be able to wire directly to this inductor. So we have the, uh, what I believe to be the positive side down here and the negative side of the USB port down here. There is no graceful way to do this, so let's do it. I have no idea where that flew off to. There's no going back now. Yeah, I can work with that. It's a pretty nice looking rectangle. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. So it's still jutting out a little bit. Let's see, somewhere around here. Time to file the circuit board down. That's about as far as I'm comfortable shaving this circuit board down. So if it still protrudes out of the case, that's gonna be as good as it looks. Uh, it's better, I think I can, I can live with that. It's jutting out a little bit, but much better than before. It is day two for me, but the same video for you guys. So let's just go ahead and pick up where we left off. Yesterday, I finished modifying the case to receive the new power plug and I'm ready to wire this thing up to the board, but before I go ahead and do that, I wanna take care of the power adapter first. Most people would just snip off the cable from the donor adapter, do the same on the receiving adapter and just wire the donor plug onto the right adapter. What I wanna try and do is crack this housing open and do the wiring on the inside. I think it'll look a little bit cleaner if we manage to do the wiring on the inside rather than snipping the plug and doing the soldering along the wire. So let's head down to the garage, crack these guys open, and we'll come back up here to do the remainder of the soldering work all at once. All right. I almost got a perfect separation, but not quite. There's a little bit of the lid that is still glued on. That's how strong this thing was glued on there. But I think it'll look all right once it's all glued back in. All right, guys, we are back upstairs. So we have our donor cable ready to go and now we just need to take the board out of this power supply and swap this cable out. And hopefully this just slides out. Yep, there we go. Nice. So the micro USB cable is perfectly good. I will desolder it and preserve the strain relief and I can use this in a future project and we'll just swap this guy in in its place. Iron on. And let's get this guy out. 
and the first cable is out. Now I can just use my fingers and let's do the same for the second cable. And it's out. Let's go ahead and clear up these holes. Just put a little bit of flux and we'll just wick that solder right off. Beautiful. Now, I'd like to wire this drill to receive center positive power. So I would like to confirm which lead, the striped lead or the black lead, is the center pin on this barrel jack. So multimeter in continuity mode. And let's just see where the outside pin goes. So one probe on the outside. And we'll see which of these wires it is. So the outside is the black wire and the striped wire is the center pin. All right, let's strip the insulation. All right. So like I mentioned, I want this to be center positive. I know the striped cable is the center pin on this connector. So I'm wiring the striped cable to positive. So let's get one of these anchored in. All right, that's tacked in. Now let's do the other side. And we are in. Okay. Great. So that is it as far as this cable goes. Now we have to do a similar continuity exercise with the barrel plug. And we have three leads on the bottom, but we only have a plus and a minus. So I'm just gonna grab this rear leg right here. That's most likely gonna be the center pin just from its placement. Yep, that's the center pin. So I can check if it has continuity with any of these and it doesn't, which means both of these guys are gonna be the outside. And they are, they're continuous with each other. So. Since I wired a center positive plug, I need to make sure that I wire this to the positive side of the board, this rear pin over here. And either of these legs can go to the ground side of the board. And one on either of the sides. So that concludes all the modifications that we're making. Now we just need to test that everything works before we put it back together and epoxy the connector in place. So let's reconnect the battery. Now our makeshift power supply, plug that in carefully without touching the exposed components. If everything went well, we should see a red charging LED. No LED, uh-oh. Did we miswire something? Center positive, positive to... What have I damaged? What have I done? What have I done? Hmm. All right, let's do some continuity checks. So I remember this point right here was continuous with negative. So that should be continuous with this side, which it is. Then the positive, this side, which it is. Why would that not be charging? It's 
definitely wired correctly. I mean, does this pin also have to be grounded? Let's ground it to, let's just ground it to TP35. Oh, interesting. So it's wired correctly, but I have to, I don't get it. Maybe I don't know enough about how these barrel plugs work. This needs to be, I don't get it. Why aren't they already continuous though? Why? I'm so confused. There's continuity between this ground and this ground. So they're both one and the same as far as I can tell, but the circuit's only happy when The, the peg that I have not wired is connected to the board. Now it's charging. This just goes to show that even a silly project like this, I know I'm gonna learn something that I didn't know going into this project because I'm still confused why it's working when this guy's wired up. All right, well, I'm gonna bridge what I'm calling both grounds, but someone's gonna have to explain that to me because I don't get why. So I have continuity between this peg and this peg, but the circuit only works if they're shorted, but they are shorted. All right, let's try it now and click. Nice. So just as a precaution, put that there. All right, it is epoxy time. Now I'm gonna try and color the epoxy with black ink so that the seam is less visible and the plug just looks a little bit neater. Nice. Five minute work time, one hour cure time, and I like to leave most things overnight. And let's clamp this sucker down. All right. All right, I'm gonna have to live with that. Let's clamp this thing in place. Now they just need to cure for at least an hour and then they're gonna be good to go. All right guys, this video is already way too long for a repair video about a drill. So here's how the power adapter turned out. Isn't that beautiful? We have the strain relief, which is intact. And you can see how the black colored epoxy blends in the repair really well. Now, as for the drill, I think it turned out pretty good. The only thing that would have made this look nicer is if there was a little bit more room on the inside for the barrel plug to push a little bit further in, but it's a solid repair. It's gonna be practical to use in the garage and it's gonna be able to tolerate a lot more heavy handling than the micro USB port would have. Let's quickly test it out. And there she is.
that's all for this video guys and for all of you that are wondering how to get started repairing stuff your first repair doesn't have to be a PS3 or a PS4. Find a broken appliance, something with maybe a loose power cord or broken connector and take pride in bringing that appliance or device back to life. You'll build the right skills along the way and you'll work your way up to those repairs that you actually enjoy and want to spend more time working on. Thanks a lot guys. I will see you again soon. Take care.